Welcome to the teaching ministry of David T. Demola. Open your heart to receive as Pastor Demola teaches the uncompromised Word of God. All right, praise the Lord. Let me tell you the story of a young man who was raised by adoptive parents in Atlanta, Georgia. He attended and graduated from a university where he earned his degree in technology. And now he has been hired by a multinational firm and he is living in Brazil where he originally was born and adopted from. He had been away from his family for a number of years. It was right around Christmas time and he had decided he wanted to do something special for his parents that he deeply loved. So one of his friends said, why don't you do something really unique? The young man said, well, what do you suggest? His friend said, well, here in Brazil, they have an amazing bird, and it's called a macaw. He said, they're capable of speech, and they are absolutely beautiful. And uh, you know what? They even talk, and they're very entertaining. And the young man said, that sounds interesting. So he said, do you know where I can, I can purchase one of these birds? He said, yeah, 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 I have a friend, and uh, it's a very special store, and uh, I know where you can buy one. So they went there together. His friend introduced him to the owner, and he said, I have just what you want. With that, he shows him this beautiful macaw, beautiful colors, majestic bird. He tells him this bird is so special that he speaks both English and Portuguese. <laughs> the young man says, great. How much is this bird? The owner says, I'll give him to you for a special price. He's only $5,000. He said, $5,000? That's a lot of money for a bird. And I said, you know what? My parents are very special. They're worth it. I'll take it. He said, well, where's the bird going to go? And he said, oh, I have to send him to Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, he said, that's going to cost another $3,000. And it's going to cost another $2,000 for the inoculations. So he said, you mean... The total is, is $10,000 for this bird? He said, yeah. And I said, you know what? You know what? My parents are worth it. $10,000, so what? So he said, uh, he bought the bird and he sent it. And over the Christmas holiday, they received the bird. The day after Christmas... He called and asked his dad, hey, did you get the bird? The father said, I sure did, son, and it was delicious. <laughs> we had friends over. We made giblet gravy. We had mashed potatoes. We had cranberry. It was delicious. The young man was quiet on the other end of the phone. <laughs> he said, Dad, are you sure you ate the bird? He said, yeah, we all enjoyed it. It was delicious. He said, I paid $10,000 for that bird. And that bird spoke both, spoke both English and Portuguese. <laughs> so the dad said, well, he should have said something. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to ask you to do today. I'm going to ask you to say something by the time we're done in this service. 
Turn in your Bible to Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. I want you to tell two people around you, you're about to say something. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now tell them, I'm about to say something. <laughs> Verse 28, did you find it yet? Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Did you hear about the young man who wouldn't turn to this book because he thought it was called Job? <laughs> it's amazing how this book of Job has tremendous New Covenant principles in it hidden in the words. Now, you have to understand, if you don't understand Bible background, that Job chronologically was probably written even before the Pentateuch was written, which means that it was not touched by law. So throughout the book of Job, you see spots of God's grace. Here is one of those important places. The man has a revelation of something that radically changes your faith. He says that man has the ability to say things that can move the heart of God and can move situations in people's lives. Amen. They all get quiet on me now, but that's okay. I'm going to keep preaching. That you, you tell somebody right now, you have the ability to decree something, and it will come to pass. Now, now that's a radical statement. When God gets ready to do something, he doesn't need your mental assent to do it. Amen. He needs your cooperation. Amen. He doesn't ask for your competency. He asks for your cooperation to do it. There are two things that happen in your Bible about things coming to pass. One is a prophetic announcement where God says something and he expects you to believe it. Amen. There's a decree where you say something and God agrees with you. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And that's what this is introducing. It's introducing to us a principle that you and I have the ability to change things in our lives. Amen by the words that we speak. So the question is, why don't you say something? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Turn in your Bible to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 10. Everybody that has a Sunday school background, and that I know today not a whole lot of people have that, but if you've ever been to Sunday school, you have learned this story. This is the story about when Joshua is in the middle of a battle, and he is trying to defend the people of God from five different kings that have come against them. Are you with me so far? So... You might say it this way. He's in a pickle. He's in a situation where he's got to have God's help. Are you with me? Do you know anybody that's in a situation right now that needs God's help? Maybe you're the person that needs God's help. Put your hand up if it's you today. Mm hmm Okay. Look at verse 12. This is, this is mind-blowing. 
Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, S-U-N, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. Verse 13. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Incredibly so, if, there, if people understand this, that there is an actual day in history where this is verified that there was a day when the sun stayed that long. Amen. Now watch this. this. This is incredible. Watch verse 14. Are you there? Are you there? And there was no day like that before it or after it. Watch this. That the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. Are you kidding me or what? For the Lord fought for Israel. (laughs) This is one of those decrees where we don't listen to what God said. God listens to what we said. Can you imagine the power of those words? That God listened to the voice of a man. And there was no day like that before or after it till now. You know why that's so amazing? Because it taps into an area of our lives that most of us don't even think about that we have authority to declare things that are now against us to stop them in their path, and God will listen to it and will do what we ask him to do. I I, got to go try this side over here, see if I could get some more radical people to answer what I said. Can you imagine that God says, if you declare things or decree things, I'll stand behind it and I'll do exactly what you say. I listen to everything that comes out of your mouth. Now, 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 if God listens, guess who else listens? So he listens when we say, nothing ever goes right for me. I don't get no breaks. I'll never win this battle. I'll never get this job. I'll never be able to afford that house. My kids are going to hell in a handbasket. The devil said, let me make that an expedient way to get them there. Our words are so powerful that God is already tuned in to hear exactly what we're going to say. So now, Why don't we say things like this? I am so blessed and highly favored that everywhere I go and touch with the sole of my foot, God supernaturally blesses me with it and gives it to me. Others are failing. Others are sick. Others are behind. Others are falling apart. But I am succeeding, and I am highly blessed and favored by Almighty God. We have become so accustomed to saying what we see rather than seeing what we say. In other words, I say I'm blessed and I'm broke at that point in the natural. Now, people often say when you say that, well, that's lying. No, 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 no. Because the Bible says, let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say I'm healed. So when the Bible says something, I don't have any problem declaring what God said because what God says is more important than what you think. (laughs) Tell somebody, say, I don't care what you think. I only care what God says. Come on, tell them that. Care what you think. 